Every American knows cars are very important. Simply put, cars are a big part of American life. But things are changing real quick. Now, lots of people can't even afford cars. Paying for and maintaining a car has become a big problem for millions of Americans. But why are things so bad? Is there any solution to this problem? Let's start by discussing how important cars are to Americans. In 2023, there were two 92 million vehicles registered in the US. These vehicles guzzled down 376 million gallons of gas every single day. That makes the US the top gasoline consumer globally, beating out countries like China, Japan, and Russia. On average, Americans are behind the wheel a lot, about 41 miles each day whether it's commuting to work, hitting the stores, or heading to a doctor's appointment. That's more mileage than ever before. And when it's vacation time within the country, a staggering 98% of Americans choose to hit the road in their car. Now here is the thing. In recent years, things have been going well for the car industry in the USA. They're making more cars than ever and they're selling them for higher prices too. They're making a lot of money. But there are some problems coming up for consumers. For more and more Americans, it's like this. If you don't have a car, you can't get a job and then you can't live the American dream. And that's not all. Car repair costs, car maintenance, car insurance, prices rose through the roof within the last two years. People from all different backgrounds, no matter how much money they have or how old they are, are spending a lot when they buy cars, whether new or used. Lately, it's been really tough for everyone to afford a car and get around. And that's a big problem for millions of Americans. Guess what? This has made most Americans actively look for affordable cars. That sounds good, but there's a problem. Finding a new and affordable vehicle has become nearly impossible in many cases. The same is true when in the market for a used car, since interest rates are astronomical compared to what they were just a few years ago going into the market for the first time in a while, they're going to be shocked as to how high the prices are for both new and used cars. The price of a new car has gone up a lot in the past five to 10 years. About five years ago, the average cost was around $38,000. But now it's gone up to $45,000. Since 2020, new car prices have gone up by a huge 31% on average. Used cars have seen an even bigger increase going up by 40% things get even more interesting. The price of cars is getting closer to what the average household makes in the USA. This rise in prices happened when interest rates were really low. But now whether you can get 0% financing or have to pay 7% makes a big difference because car prices are so high. Purchasing a $45,000 car, which is almost as much as what the average person makes in a year in the US, and then financing it at 7% interest or higher means paying thousands more in interest on top of the original cost. This leads to more and more Americans getting into huge debt just to make their car payments. And often they end up not being able to pay at all in the end. Now here is the thing. For many Americans, buying a car means getting a loan. It's the second biggest expense after paying for their house. The biggest expenses for many people are their house, their car, and paying for their kids' college education. And nowadays, you're not just getting loans for three years anymore. It's more common to finance for five or even seven years. That means you're stuck making monthly payments for a really long time. But wait, there's more. People are often taken aback by extra expenses like insurance and repair costs for their cars. When you buy a car, you don't always think about how much it will cost to fix or keep it running. But nowadays, it's getting more pricey to repair new cars. And insurance costs are going up too, so these additional expenses can catch people off guard. The hidden costs with owning any EV would be that of insurance, repairs, and God forbid there's any damage. And in this town, you're going to have some damage. And that's not all. Because of all the new technology, insurance prices are going up. It costs more to fix a car now, especially if it's been in a crash. You have to fix not just the regular parts, but also the safety systems and other things. It's not as simple as just weighing it. You need fancy computer tools and special parts, which makes owning a car more expensive. In only a year, from 2021 to 2022, insurance prices went up about 14%. Then, by the end of last year, they went up another 20%. So in total, that's a 34% increase in just three years. It's the biggest jump since the 1970s. Meanwhile, 
insurance companies are making more money than ever because they're charging higher rates. So what does this mean to the average person? It means that the ones who earn just enough to make ends meet are really struggling with owning a car and making sure they can still get around without breaking the bank. These are the people who will feel the squeeze the most during this tough time, as they might not have ways to get around easily. And without a way to get around, it's hard to find a job. And without a job, it's tough to provide for your family. You're probably thinking, what about public transportation? Those guys are actually trying to really do their best to transport thousands of people who can't afford a car to places they have to be. That's for like work or for shopping, and of course, a doctor's appointments. But here's the thing. It's important to know that public transportation in the United States, except for places like New York with its subway or San Francisco with its tram system, has always had a tough time. America and public transportation don't go together as smoothly as they do in Europe, for example. In Indianapolis, for example, the number of people using public transportation isn't just back to pre-COVID levels, it's been going up recently. In 2023, over 6.7 million people used fixed route services, which is a 20% increase from 2022. Last year, those aged 18 to 39, Generation Z and Millennials, had more than $20 billion in auto loans, more than 90 days overdue. Even in Indianapolis, there are challenges as transportation needs change for many people who can't afford a car, but still need to adapt to new demands, especially for work. You might live in the city, but then there is also the suburbs, and lots of new jobs and companies are setting up outside of downtown. This isn't just happening in Indianapolis, it's all over the U.S. So now you need to find a way to get people from the city to these jobs outside of the city, and that's not easy. Is there a solution to this? Yes, the best way for them to get to work is by using what's called a microtransit option. Microtransit allows agencies to offer riders an on-demand option that is more flexible than designated fixed routes and appointment-like paratransit. This is for people who don't have transportation, who don't have cars, and who can't afford bus tickets. Things get even more interesting. In 2022, around 5.7% of adults didn't have a dependable way to get around every day. That's about 15 million Americans facing challenges just to travel from one place to another. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, has just shared fresh information showing how this issue is becoming increasingly serious with each passing year. Now here is the thing. Although Americans' public transportation systems are not bad, there are gaps in the services. If they could fill those gaps, they could meet the demand and get people where they need to go more efficiently. Instead of taking multiple buses or dealing with routes that don't cover important places like jobs, childcare, or grocery stores, they could make transportation easier. People wouldn't have to carry heavy bags of food or manage multiple kids or strollers on the buses. Now here is the kicker. The government needs to realize the reality for thousands of Americans when it comes to getting around. What many people don't get is that a lot of people are just one paycheck away from being in a really tough spot, like being homeless. So if they have to choose between transportation and eating, they'll choose to eat. There will be some inexpensive SUVs, but um, the cars are cheaper and uh, those are gradually they're falling out of favor with uh, buyers, number one, and plus the auto companies don't make nearly as much money on them as they do uh, more expensive SUVs. So the auto companies have gotten out, or a lot of the auto companies have gotten out of the small car business. If it's between transportation and paying rent or the mortgage, they'll prioritize housing. Transportation is a big part of staying healthy and well, so it's important to address these challenges. Transportation is many things. Access to public transportation and microtransport options are an ever-growing and important part of it, even in the United States. But there is a problem. Mobility in the county comes back to one critical component, the car and access to it. That's why affordability plays such an important role for everybody. Affordability is usually defined as spending about 15% of your household income on transportation, not just the car itself. Most Americans end up needing a car to get to work and make a living or even just to go out and enjoy themselves, like going to a movie or eating out. That's why the future of cars is so important for everything related to transportation. 
It affects not just how we get around, but also the way we live, our communities, and the economy of the country. So how can transportation become easier? The answer lies on electric vehicles. The future of transportation is being reshaped by the rise of EVs and autonomous driving technology. These innovations promise to make travel easier, faster, and cheaper. The U.S. government is investing heavily in promoting the adoption of EVs across the country. Yet, despite the hype, the number of EVs sold in the U.S. last year fell short of expectations. Only a small fraction of vehicles sold were EVs, with traditional internal combustion engine vehicles still dominating the market. Now here is the thing. Legacy car manufacturers rely on the profits from these traditional vehicles to fund their transition to electric vehicles. This reliance on traditional vehicles means that prices for both new and used cars are likely to remain high in the near future. This poses a challenge for consumers, especially those who rely on affordable transportation to meet their daily needs. Experts think new ideas and competition will make transportation cheaper for everyone in the future. The government might help too, at least for a while. In the future, some people think nobody will own their own car anymore. Instead, we might subscribe to electric and self-driving cars. These cars could be safer and cheaper with help from the government. So what do you think? Will EVs reshape the transportation industry or will they plunge it further into trouble? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments section. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.